Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hobart Bay Sports Network. I am your host Justin Winter, and today your number one Hobart Bay ones are going on the road to Texas. This is a game I've wanted to schedule for a while, and we finally get to face them. Now Texas, they actually have a pretty good offense despite the fact that they're 2-3, and three, but they've only gone in games against the SEC. Our defense is where we shine. Sam Spicer is their leading quarterback. 90 completions on 137 attempts, 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns, and 3 picks. I'd say he's being productive so far, maybe a little less so than he could be. He's got an accurate arm, but not much strength to back it up. He's got okay speed, too. However, the mainstay of this team is Greg Wilson. By mainstay, I mean the part that I want to focus on. 377 yards through five games, three touchdowns. He transferred away from Hobart Bay because John Gordon beat him out. And he's a legitimately great running back. I mean, he's got, you know, 94. He's a 94 overall, for crying out loud. He's really good. Welcome to the state of Texas, where Hobart Bay is set to go against the Texas Longhorns, who moved to the SEC this offseason. So disregard the Big 12 logos you'll find on their field and uniforms. They're actually an SEC school. Texas has quite a prolific passing offense, but they have not had the record to show for it. Only two and three, all games in conference. I've never heard of that before. Starting off the season with five in-conference games. Makes me wonder how they'll do out of conference. Anyway, Texas, if they want a shot at that tournament at the end of the season, they're going to have to turn things around. They can't afford very many losses. Only one max, I'd say. Hobart Bay is set to get the ball first, and we have kickoff in Texas. Timothy Paulson will take this one out. Trying to get some blockers here, and that did not work at all. So... Hobart Bay, going to get the ball, split backfield to start off. It's going to be a handoff to John Gordon, good run to start off, 8 yards. Excellent start to the day if I do say so. Second down and 2, 3 men out wide. And it's another handoff to John Gordon and he just picks up the first down on a business run. Now we have Jenkins more close to the backfield, it's a handoff to Gordon again who gets Another first down, all right. So far, it's John Gordon and no one else. Now with some eye formation. It's a toss to John Gordon this time. One man to beat. Oh, he made a miss pretty good. And he's down at the Texas 45. Already off to a hot start on the ground. What's the play call here? It's a triple option. Stone keeps here. And now he pitches back to John Gordon. He picks up a first down. Still only John Gordon. I think he's over 50 yards. At least close to it. First down and 10. Stone looking to throw. Finally, he's rolling out. And he's got Bentley Zwiebel. For 13 yards. Finally, we have a pass. First down and 10. And it's a keeper for Kale Snow. So we're still running the ball. And he's inside the 10 for a first down and goal. Talk about a long, relentless drive. Now second and goal. Can Hobart Bay cap it off? Hand off to John Gordon. With room. And he's in for the touchdown. My goodness. That is as disheartening a drive as you could possibly have for the Texas defense. They did nothing. They could not stop the run. That's how you dishearten someone. Now with the studio update... As TCU upsets number two Cincinnati. That's astounding, especially considering they must have had some defensive scores because those numbers do not look like offensive masterpieces. First down and 10 now for Texas. They're trying to recover after giving up the touchdown, and Spicer will lose a yard on the first play. So, not exactly how you want to start off your, uh, your kickback attempt, I guess. Punch back? I don't know. Now he's looking to throw. He's going to the left. Oh, it's wide open. Randy Jones, if he had just stayed in bounds, could have gone a whole lot more. Now here's a draw. That's Greg Wilson, the former Hobart Bay one. He picks up a whole four yards. Now third down and five. Will they go back to Wilson? No, they're going to throw. Spicer looking for someone over and incomplete. Timothy Paulson almost got the interception. Instead, Texas is going to send out their kicking team. This one... 52 yards out. It's a long one. It's up. 
And he knocked that one through with plenty of space to spare, too. All right, high formation now for Hobart Bay. We get the ball back, a little play action. Brett Stone looking, launches deep, and that one is caught by Ken Anderson, and he's just tackled. Oh, man, you know he's going to be annoyed by that. Now we're going with some Wildcat here. That's Joda Joanne in the tight end in that quarterback. He keeps on this one. He's rolling out. He does know how to throw. Instead, he keeps it, and he's in for the touchdown, giving the tight end some love. Though he ran it in. How many rushing touchdowns do you see out of tight ends? It's always receiving. Hey, he got supplanted by Gordon Jenkins for the starting tight end role. He's got to have some sort of productivity. Now third down and six for Texas. Can they avoid going three and out? That is a question. Spicer will send them to getting the punting team onto the field. That was a very poor decision of his. Now here's the punt. His... Randy Roberts gets to return this one. He goes to the left. He has some room there. And the last play of the quarter will get Hobart Bay to about the Texas 40. 11-point lead. The ball in great position. Well, second down and eight to start off this second quarter. Three men out in the pattern. And it's going to be another handoff. <laughs> what else would we do today? Basically, the entirety of the first quarter in this game in general, has consisted of handing the ball off to John Gordon with a couple of exceptions. Third down and one is a toss to the right. Gordon got the block on the edge, has a whole lot more, and he's tackled just inside the 10. You can get big plays, but just can't finish off those big plays with touchdowns. Second and goal, Kale Snow, handoff. Oh my goodness. Number 54 there just blazed through the line. I don't think they even saw him. Now third down and goal. Sending Harris in motion. We're going to try that little screenplay. We do love it. John Gordon does not get the block he needs. Would have been questionable if he could have made it anyway. So we kick off a field goal and it's a 14 point game now. Texas with only Spicer back there. He needs his own line to hold up. They do and it's caught by Dennis who breaks off a tackle and gets a solid 16 yards. Maybe it was 18. I can't remember. First down and 10. Going with some hurry up. Spicer. He will run with it instead. He has some room if he cut up field. He breaks a couple tackles. I guess it works. <laughs> oh my. Was that four tackles that he broke? I think it was four tackles. How does that happen? Want to try it again? No, he doesn't. Instead, it's caught by Rich Walsky. He gets a first down. Texas on a drive this time. Very impressive play. Now third down and three. Spicer's still the only guy back there. He will throw, maybe. Yes, he will. And that's caught by Edwards. Texas continuing this drive. Not slowing down either. Second and four, Richwalski in motion. And Spicer does not pitch the ball. Maybe that was a good decision. Maybe it wasn't. Probably should have just handed it off to Greg Wilson. Would have at least lost less. Third down and seven, Spicer will get it out. It's caught by Greg Wilson. And he... Oh, he got the first down! That's why we recruited him. He is a darn good football player. Even though he got beat out by John Gordon, he's still a great player, and Spicer loses more yards. I don't know why, when these quarterbacks decide that they want to run, they decide to go parallel to the line of scrimmage and not perpendicular, so they hardly even get any yardage. They fail on third down, and so they're just going to send on their field goal unit again. And here we go. Plenty of leg. It's up and it's through. <laughs> if he missed that on a power, I would question why he's even here. First down and 10 now. Brett Stone looking to throw. He launches and it's caught by Gordon Jenkins. The big frame. Keeping the ball hidden from the defender. Very important aspect right there. First down and 10. We're going to send everyone deep. Brett Stone rolling out now to buy time. Oh, well, they gave him all the green in the world. He'll take it. And he will get knocked out of bounds. I would uh, recommend going out of bounds first. And now Kale Snow is in the game. He's going to continue throwing. He's going to launch deep. And he's going to find Bentley Zwiebel for 31. Hobart Bay with an excellent drive to end the half. And it wasn't even close. Zwiebel got way past his defender. He is just that good. He has been that good. And we still got him for, I think, at least another year. This is fantastic. 
And that will end the first half. Hobar Bay leading by 18 points. It doesn't even feel close. I can see why Texas has fallen out of the top 25. They're just not top 25 material. That's really all there is to it. I mean, normally a top 25 team would put up a little bit more of a fight, but when you're on pace to be beat 48 to 12, it's not a good look. Plus, when you're allowing a single running back in John Gordon to put up ridiculous numbers in just one half, I don't see why you should be a top 25 team. You got Greg Wilson, great, but I think he uh, he's regretting that choice as they're regretting that play call with a loss of three. Sorry, Sam Spicer, but maybe you should tell your coaches to give a better call. Third down of 14, I imagine it's a throw. Yes, it is. Spicer will, he has all day, looking, gets it out, caught, Edwards. Yes, they got it. Great play by the Longhorns. Now third down and two. They're going to throw it again. Spicer gets it out, and it's caught by Dennis. So Texas getting out a little bit of momentum in this third quarter. Counter now. Greg Wilson breaks off a tackle. Fighting. Oh, he broke another one. He's in the open, and then he's chased down. That is what they should be doing all game. They should be utilizing him. Instead, they're not. They're a passing team. There's a screen, and that's caught by Jones. And he would have been better just swatting the ball away. Yeah. I'm pretty sure at this point, Greg Wilson is regretting his choice to come to Texas. The Longhorns were the second team on his list after Hobart Bay, as that pass is knocked away for an incompletion. But uh, it's possible that Texas was more of a running team at that point, and now they're a passing team, and it doesn't seem like he's getting much production as Texas knocks through another field goal, so congrats Texas, it's now a two-score game as Brett Stone leads the team out. Hand off to John Gordon, breaks a cat tackle, I mean, and uh, yeah, he's just beasting out on them. Even when he runs into defenders, he's over 100 yards, he's still got a quarter and a half to go. Hand off to him again, because what else would we do? He keeps on finding holes, and props to the O-line again. This is fantastic. I don't know if I've seen a better running performance. Hand off again to John Gordon, and he just got the first down. That's a business run. Second down to four. Now Gordon Jenkins is in the backfield. Hand off to Randy Marquard, and he gets the first down. Eight yards. That's a good run. Even our backup is getting good yardage. Granadu is just one run. But still, third and five. We're going to hand it off again, and John Gordon does not get the first down. I guess Texas was sort of expecting that one, and that will end the third quarter. So, after three quarters, we have a 15-point lead and a fourth down and two, and Coach Perkins has a decision to make. An aggressive play call to start off the fourth. Up by 15, we're still going for it. It's kept by Stone. He fights and he does not get there. He would have had it, but the one defender came off his block and got him. Now third down and three. Will it do Texas any good? Not if they decide to punt here. And now Spicer is down. Add insult to injury, or I guess injury to insult. And they will punt the ball. So now Randy Roberts is going to get a chance to flex his returning muscle as he cuts right. Has some room, got past one man, and... Oh... Just got tripped up. Just got tripped up. Still pretty good, though. Eye formation now. Let me guess. It's a run. Huh. I'm a wizard. Anyway, John Gordon on the side, and he fights ahead for another first down. 16 yards. He was met at the first down marker and still pushes ahead for six more. Now another handoff to him, finding more gaps in the defense. My goodness. As a team, we're over 200 rushing yards. John Gordon at 158, now third down and two, and off again, finding more room, another first down. I mean, this is just insane. His average is fantastic right now. First down and goal, and hand off to Randy Marquardt, who scores the touchdown. So the backup comes in and gets his own, but uh, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's going to put Texas away. I don't see them coming back from this. 
I mean, three touchdowns, including a two-point conversion. They will drive down the field here with uh, McAfee in the game. He's going to launch to the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown by Rich Walski. I love that name, by the way, Rich Walski. Quinn McAfee, 6 for 7, 75 yards and a touchdown. They get the two, but we get the onside. Here's a handoff to John Gordon on the outside, trying to beat one man. He, he sort of did. He may have broken off the tackle, but I guess we won't know. Third down and one now, continuing the I formation just to get the extra blockers in. And it's a handoff to Chris Oliver. Interesting play call, but we'll take it. Texas is now out of timeouts, so a first down would win the game. It's a handoff to John Gordon going to the outside. He has the first down. There's the win, and he gets inside the 10, a 17-yard carry. It's that 194. 194. That's 10 yards away from breaking the record. And on the toss, he will make it into the end zone. That breaks 200 yards, I believe. I think that puts him at 201. 24 seconds left. But we do force a punt. We use our timeouts because we want him to get a record. There's five seconds left on the clock. So basically, one play, maybe two if it's quick, to get like three yards. Here we go. Toss left. John Gordon. Oh, no. They didn't block for him. And we get the timeout. Wow. We got the timeout. All right. One more chance. One more chance for John Gordon. Handoff. He's going to the outside. He cuts inside. He falls ahead. Gets five. And that, I think that's a record. Do we get a graphic? No, we don't get a We don't get a graphic. Thanks. All right, well, well, we'll have to find out <laughs> afterwards by checking the record book. Yes, so we win the game. It was a pretty dominant win. 30 carries, 204 yards, and two touchdowns for John Gordon. He balled out. And in a game where the storyline was, was putting John Gordon as the starter, the right choice was Greg Wilson right to transfer to Texas. Is he really the better back? Well, John Gordon proved his case. I think Hobart Bay set out to make a point today that John Gordon is running back one. And there's no doubt about it. Could Greg Wilson have put up these numbers? Maybe. With this offensive line, I think it's very possible that he also would have put up these numbers. But he got stuck with Texas, who wanted to throw the ball, and they wound up throwing screens which are caught for a loss of four. So we'll recap this one in the post-game show. Yeah. Yeah, Brett Stone, he had a good day today. Six for nine, 101 yards. No touchdowns and no picks. And then Kale Snow had a 31-yard touchdown pass. That was good. But John Gordon was the star of the show. 204 yards, two touchdowns. You're averaging almost seven yards a carry on 30 carries. Guys, math, I mean, that, that's just insane. On the receiving end, don't expect much. Ken Anderson got a 57-yard catch. Bentley Zwiebel got 44 yards and a touchdown. The one from Kale Snow, 24 yards for Jenkins. And John Gordon also got 7 yards added on. Noah Methuselah, 5 tackles, all of them solo. One of them for a loss. However, Nathan Davidson, 4 tackles for loss. No sacks, unfortunately, for him. But still a great game all around. Then on Texas, it was... James Downing, and only him. Eight solo tackles. None for a loss, though. Couldn't really do much. I don't think we turned the ball over today. In fact, I don't think either team turned the ball over today. On the receiving end, no one really stood out. Vincent Richwolski got 53 yards and a touchdown. Everything else was just so-so. On the ground, Greg Wilson got 20 yards. Yeah. Through the air, they had multiple quarterbacks. Quinn McAfee wound up going 6 for 9, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Sam Spicer, 14 for 19, 103 yard. Oh, he, he did throw an interception, but it was at the end of the first half, and it didn't matter at all. So we beat them in everything but passing yards, but that's sort of to be expected. And, as a matter of fact, John Gordon did break the record. If we do some math, 
We gained two yards on that final possession total. It was third down and eight at the end, and he broke the record. Before that, there was no mention of even tying the record, which means that a net gain of two went from behind the record to in front of the record, which means Tyree Nolan's record was 203 yards. John Gordon beat the record by one yard. Anyway, next week we are hosting the Washington Huskies. It's always a thriller when these two teams clash, unless we're getting blown out. I hope to see you there, but until then, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and have a nice day.